your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. In 1994 at World Cup USA, could this request come back to haunt America? You can't get Radio Glide here. You don't do loyal burgers. <laughs> I didn't come here with a supporters club, you know. I came by my own accordion to support my country, Holland. So, uh, what part of Holland do you come from? Black Hall. And it is a great personal sacrifice to myself that I am here because if Holland reaches a final, I'll miss a walk. Ah. Uh, I can see a wee history lesson is going for a right. Okay, now listen. It's dead simple, right? Right, a long time ago there was like a Pope, right? And he was a Catholic. <laughs> oh, they were all Catholics then, you know. But I mean, they were, you know. Yeah. But, right, Henry VIII, he said, eh, no way. No way because, because he's burdened that, you know. But I mean, you know, there was James and, 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 and the Pope, and they were giving it that, right? But, but, King William. <laughs> Who was not a poof, by the way, not a poof, right? he, he and his pal Martin Luther said, right, that is it, no more. So, so they had to fight, right? Well, no with ourselves, no with ourselves, right? But they fought, you know, the Pope and that, and they beat the butt. <laughs> and they won, right? At a battle of a point. So, so it's because of that, well, that there's a world and and like the religious freedom and that, you know. I mean, naturally, I'm simplifying things, but I mean, can I get a gist there, no? Ah, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, the Orange Walk? Oh, you mud? Yes. But isn't this just an anti-Catholic demonstration of provocative triumphalism and, well, basic bigotry? Well, there's no much point in doing it, if it isn't it. Having nailed my colours well and truly to the mace, I would have to say, though, that I have nothing against the Roman menace, per se. I just don't like their indoctrination. I mean, my son, if I ever get access again, will of course be forced to support Rangers, swear allegiance to the Lodge, learn to play the flute and join the Scottish Young Conservative Party. But once he's 21, he can decide for himself what he wants to be. Germany. Possibly super proud of Jurgen Klinsmann plays for Greece. You ever want to highlight? Nah, I don't like John Travolta. <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Latin country, forget it. Sweden. Well, good show. We have our people. <laughs> Romania. Oh, no way. No, that's a capital Italy. <laughs> hey, I know a lot of the so called soccer purists. We're against the finals being held here. But I'm all for it. And I've certainly been looking forward to the States. The state I'm in in the plane going on. The state I'm in when I wake up in the cells. The state I'm in after the fight I started a baseball match. Do you have any concerns over World Cup USA? Aye. I'm a bit worried. Especially for the World Cup mascot, Striker. It's a duck, and I'm fair the South Korean team might try to eat it. <laughs> and if Holland don't win World Cup USA, uh, who do you think will? Scotland. But Scotland <laughs> haven't qualified. Aye, but that's when Scotland are at their most dangerous. <laughs> Two minutes to go, and it's still nothing each here at Ibrooks in this pulsating old firm clash. Hedman has the ball, he passes it to Baldy. Baldi slips it to Lambert, Lambert forward to Larson, Larson to a goal, and it goes to Beaton. Plus saves the shot, Plus gives it to Moore. Moore passes, but it's in the shot to Baldi, and Plus saves. Moore clears. The clearance goes to Moles, Moles is through, Moles goes round him, and Moles must score the Moles on the goal, and Larson scores for Selby.
You see, for pre-season training, we pure went to New York and stays in the Brooklyn Hotel. I says these Yanks must be pure into football if they name a place after David Beckham's Wayne. Nine. Number nine, Dado Purcell. And number four. Number four, Thomas Buffel. And that completes the selection for today's Rangers team. Could be a major cash injection coming into Rangers. But, uh. <laughs> hee haw, off this scratch card. Shame. Walter, you. you old silver fox. You. Looking back over your totally sensational, utterly astonishing, omnisciently magnificent career. What, for you, was your greatest achievement with Rangers? Mine was nine in a row. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, that was a memorable achievement, but I think the thing I've enjoyed the most is, is working with the players, you know, past and present. I know the current squad gets a lot of criticism, but at the present moment, you know, I'd say that Al McGregor is the nearest thing I've ever seen to Andy Gorham. And to be fair, you know, the lad's not a bad goalkeeper either, you know. Uh, <laughs> any more news on the takeover? Will you have a war chest for your assault on the Europa League? Well, uh, I've got no news on the takeover and there's no likelihood of money to spend. Well, that is an outrage. I personally think it's time the Scottish Government stepped in, <laughs> introduced a new tax, the Rangers tax, and all the money raised be given to you. Well, that's very kind of you, Chuck, but personally, I, I can't see that happening. Just uh, <clears throat> leave it with me. <laughs> Finally, Walter, on behalf of the Rangers community, as you approach your final farewell, I don't think I'm in any way going over the top when I say that not only should you receive a knighthood, mm -hmm, but George Square should be renamed Walter Square. They should ditch Andrew and make you St Walter, the patron saint of Scotland. And your birthday hmm, hmm, should be a national holiday. Walter, as you walk the streets amongst the people of this great country, may you be serenaded by Bon Jovi. Good night. And thanks for the memory. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chuck. The Order is often criticised for living in the past and not embracing the modern world. This is very hurtful to us, which is why this marching season we've made some big changes. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's time once again to select the new chairman of Rangers. Are you ready? have said it, right? 
Between 2001 and 2010, Rangers operated a dodgy financial system that gave them an unfair sporting advantage over everybody else, and this has to be acknowledged. Look, I am, however, a reasonable Celtic man. So, look, look, I'm not calling for title stripping or medals taken back. No, no, no. All, all I'm saying is that we asked the risk we put against the titles and the Cups Rangers won during these years. And a wee line at the bottom of the page that says, Asterisk denotes cheating bastards. He was the individual the teddy bears thought was going to save their club, but he ended up in court facing charges of fraud. Now to commemorate wee Craigie's acquittal and the Rangers fans being left not knowing who to blame, the Loyal Mint have produced a limited edition replica of the one pound coin White used to buy Rangers from Sir David Murray. This limited edition collector's item comes with an exact replica copy of Ranger's Notification of Administration. <laughs> Plus, a dictionary which contains the definition of the word liquidation. <laughs> and a genuine replica Donald Finlay QC presentation pipe set. The Craig White limited edition one pound commemorative coin used to own, to treasure, to throw at opposition players and fans. <laughs>